video. So in this video, we are going to see a very important function called input. This function is, uh, I mean, this is beneficial for taking input from the keyboard from the user. Um, and uh, the way to call this function is you type input and then you type a message that actually describes the expected uh, entry that for example enter something if you want somebody to or tell somebody to just enter let's say a number you can write enter number or any specification to help the user to enter whatever input the user want to enter properly one thing is that no matter what the user will enter the variable a will be having type string str um, so even if you enter a number let's say 12 or 34 or whatever uh, that will be received as a string and then there are ways to convert string to number if that really was a number so whatever you receive using input function will be a string and then there are ways to deal with that string if that was a number how to convert that string to a number and and so on so for example let's see uh, let's see on the Jupyter notebook how it works so um, let's see for example uh, x is equal to input enter a number let's see and then I, then if I press shift enter a prompt will appear in front of you that will require you to enter a number for example if I enter let's say 56 and then I press enter not shift enter enter then x will receive 56 now you might be thinking this 56 is an integer so the type of x should be an integer but uh, this is not the case the type of x will be a string and the reason is whatever you enter is received as characters 5 and 6 even if you have entered something else that would have been received as a sequence of characters so this is no longer a 5 as a digit 5, 6 as a digit 6. These are some characters, sequence of characters. Now, if you want to, uh, I, I mean, there are ways to convert this X, for example. Maybe you want, let's say, Y or X as int X. So this means you have now converted this string to integer and then whatever the result is you have stored that result in x again if you now see the type of x uh, type of x the result is integer and you can for example print x minus 34 and the result is 22 because x was x was 56 so uh, this input function is uh, i mean it is and one way by the way if you if you are expecting an integer or a float value for example let's say you are expecting a float value then it is good to write input let's say enter a real number maybe or or any message any message and then at this particular time at the time of input then it is okay to convert that thing to a float and it will become a float yeah that's it so now uh, for example you enter 12.5 if you see the type of a now type of a will be float okay but there are problems for example if you are if you are expecting float and somebody enters uh, uh, enters something that is not float for example a or let's say b equals float input enter a real number let's say and then you press shift enter and somebody just enters let's say abc so now this is not a float abc cannot be converted to a real number no matter what so you will catch an error uh, there are ways to avoid these kind of errors and program program breaks using exception handling and there are other ways but um, be careful I mean the user is not um, I mean the one who is going to enter uh, the the enter the input um, if that that user is not restricted enough then you can get errors 
Um, so, uh, I mean, this is not the case that whatever you will enter, it will be converted to a float. If it really, if whatever you have entered is really to convert, it is really convertible to a float, then it can be convertible to a float, not otherwise. And at the input time, there is no restriction. You cannot restrict the keyboard to enter what or whatnot. Although there are ways, although there are ways to do that. So um, that's about uh, the input function. So uh, we have seen uh, some of the functions. Let me just let me just go through quickly. Uh, we have seen input. We have seen uh, is instance. We have seen diff mode. We have in, we have seen power function. We have seen the round function, and there are several others. Um, yes. So from now on, we will be actually moving towards uh, 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 basically decision making based sometimes we will use these kind of functions mostly we will be using input function but sometimes we'll be using maybe other functions like these functions and sometimes uh, uh, we will be doing decision making based on these and and stuff like so one thing that i want to tell you is if for example you know the function name some function let's say like power you know that pow power is a function but you do not know how to use that function one way is to just type a, a question mark in front of it and then just press shift enter and in front of you the documentation of the power will open up so it will tell that this is power that's how it should be called and uh, then some description will be in front of you that equivalent to x raised to the power y with no arguments with two arguments or equivalent to x raised to the power y remainder with z with three arguments and so on. If you want to see uh, implementation of this function as well, uh, we will see the functions later on, but if you want to see more about the help, you can type the double uh, semicolon, a uh, double question mark and uh, more things should be open up in front of you. So, in this particular case, the uh, this power function does not have an implementation uh, in Python, so the single question mark and double question mark are the same. Uh, one more way uh, is to use the help function, help power, and you will get uh, a lot of information about the power, how, uh, for example, help on built-in function power in module built-in so this is power this is equivalent to this some key types and stuff like so uh, or for example you want to know how can i use the input function for example so you can uh, write help on input and this is how this can be used so sometimes it is okay if if you know the if you know the name of some function and you know how to use it you can just open up the documentation right here in Jupyter Notebook by either using a help function or you can use just a question mark in front of the name and so on. So um, that's about the functions. Um, in the next video, we will be seeing the power of comparisons and uh, the decision making or sometimes called the control flow. So the real fun will begin uh, from the next video because we will be actually deciding which part of the code should run and which part should not run based on based on certain conditions so hope to see you in the next video